Hi, I'm Dr. B and welcome to Beloved Blackness, vlog 54. It's been some time. Oh my goodness, I've missed you all. Um, the last time I did a vlog was in August and there's been a lot going on. And so, um, pardon the, the interruption. However, we're back. And um, wanted to kind of talk about today, this idea, the last time I did a, um, the vlog in August, we talked about the window of tolerance. And um, there's more to be able to uncover and think about in terms of strategies to take care of ourselves that would fall in that soothe category, um, but also ways to be able to manage um, the level of stress and distress that we've been contending with. But one thing I wanna talk about related to that, but specifically related to the stress of the pandemic, is the history of how African descended people have been treated um, around the world, but specifically in the United States related to healthcare. So we all know the incredible numbers of um, this disproportionate um, representation of African Americans as well as people of um, Latinx descent. The impact of the pandemic upon our communities is so much greater and way more represented. We're way more represented in terms of number of cases, as well as um, those who have poor outcomes. And of course, that's of concern. And we could have a whole vlog just talking about all the different reasons why. But what I want to emphasize today is if and when we find ourselves having to navigate the medical system, the things that can be barriers based on our ancestral story and histories and the ways to be able to navigate those. So a few things come to mind. One is like the impact of just cultural mistrust, right? That we know the Tuskegee in, um, experiment was a thing. We know that forced sterilizations not only was a thing, still is a thing. And so there's a way in which there's a, a wisdom around having cultural mistrust in terms of navigating a medical system that has not only not always served us properly, and made us invisible, but has also done harm to us. And so the first thing I want to encourage everyone to do is just to go um, into your experiences when you're having to navigate the medical system with the awareness that that cultural mistrust may be there. When we try to like, get rid of or be in denial of our own personal as well as our collective experiences, it actually heightens our level of anxiety. So just by being honest and truthful, right? So that hugs analogy again, honest, about the reality of our community's experience historically, personally, collectively can help us to be able to manage that anxiety and to be honest about that. The other piece is around how to assert ourselves. And so the essence of Beloved Blackness is for us to recognize that we are people of value, right? That we have worth and dignity inherent in us because we are persons and that our cultural heritage brings with us an added sense of who we are in terms of our value. When we know that we come from a people, not just who have been able to survive the difficulties of the Ma'afa, the trauma of the Ma'afa, but also people who are the foundations of civilization, who laid the foundations of civilization and who have given tremendously to this world, um, whether it's through architecture or writing, literature, science, mathematics, all the different areas. Our ancestors um, have been laying the groundwork for thousands and thousands of years. And so for us to connect to that um, reality in terms of ancient African civilizations, but also contemporary um, contributions that people of African descent have made. And so when we go into these encounters, although we may not be familiar personally with medical language, we may not be familiar personally with somebody who has navigated the medical system successfully in terms of maybe someone who's a nurse practitioner or a nurse or physician, we can still go in believing that we deserve to have advocacy for our own health and well-being, but also that we deserve treatment, right? We deserve treatment that um, uh, uh, um, responds to us with respect and that it's sound, that it's competent. And and so what I want to encourage everyone to do if you have to navigate that system is go in with support. And that's connected to our values in terms of knowing that we need a village and we live in village um, interpersonally. That's what keeps us um, going. And um, that to not internalize this idea that I'm an individual and so I can handle it by myself, but to actually allow yourself to lean into your support system. And so the support could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a friend of a friend who knows something about that particular condition or someone who works at that hospital who you trust who can be an advocate for you. So that's the, one of the main suggestions I 
have is to make sure that you have support. Secondly, if you begin to feel as if there's some treatment that does feel like it's biased and that does not feel like it's um, respectful, to actually use your voice. It may not be directly to that provider in that moment, especially if you need something from them in that moment. Um, not everyone's open to that feedback, but many um, hospitals will send out surveys. There are many people who work who are on quality control who are um, open to getting that feedback. And so the use your voice to talk about your experiences, sometimes even after the experience, after you've thought about it, can be really helpful. But being strategic about who it is that you share that information with. And finally, to take care of yourself. That when you've had to navigate the medical system, feelings of helplessness and vulnerability certainly begin to surface more. And so to honor that by allowing yourself to take time, decompress, breathe, restore your sense of yourself in terms of um, one counter to feelings of helplessness when you don't have control over everything. It's making choice around things that you do have control over. So it may be an old hobby that you decide to pick up as you're having to navigate it. Um, or if you're in a position where you are actually ill and you're having to recover from an illness, to do things that give you a sense of replenishment, that help to revive your whole sense of yourself so that the patient you isn't the only you that you have in your mind, but you also remember, oh yeah, I have hobbies. Oh yeah, I haven't talked to so-and-so in some time. Let me reach out to them. So I wanted to give a special, um, give some special attention to this idea uniquely because we're in this pandemic and we're having to navigate as a community um, being with, with, within the medical system more than usual. And so I want to encourage you to be honest about how you feel and what our history has been. Assert yourself, take care of yourself, bring support with you, um, and turn to those things that help you to remember that you're not just a patient or your family member is not just a patient. All right, until next vlog, I'm Dr. B. Be sure to um, hit subscribe if you have not already subscribed to the channel. Bye.